Let's talk about cramping abdominal pain, diarrhea, constipation. I'm going to hand that over to you. <laughs> well, cramping abdominal pain is exactly that. We talk to people a lot when they hear their bowels make noise. There's some hypermotility uh, of the gut that can produce symptoms such as pain or bloating. Uh, certainly our diet plays a role in that some of the dietary products we take can ferment within the bowel producing methane and carbon dioxide gas and therefore more distension, more discomfort. We got to realize that the innervation of the gut is not the same as our skin. We can actually cut pieces of the colon or small bowel away and people have no symptoms. But if they get distended, that produces a symptom that people are describing as pain or cramping. We also worry about partial obstructions, whether somebody has a herniation or they've had prior surgeries and scar tissue develop, and therefore the food and residue doesn't pass through there as readily. So what are those, what are those symptoms, Scott? If somebody has partial obstruction, that means the food can't get by. What are right. the symptoms? The symptoms are typically bloating, distension, and crampy abdominal pain that now, could, that's fairly continuous. Now, a lot, fairly continuous. A lot of people right. get gassy, bloating pain, and they right. complain of that all the time. Right. Is there a chance they have partial intermittent obstruction? That is always a possibility. We just dis discussed risk factors like multiple previous surgeries uh, being one of the big risk factors we always worry about. How do you treat somebody that's got distension, gas, cramping abdominal pain? Well, we try to alter their diet. We, we ask them to look at the diet they're taking, avoid a lot of synthetic sugars. We can also provide them a list of foods that we know can ferment in the gut, producing more methane and carbon dioxide gas. This would be called a FODMAPS uh, type diet. And there are some basic guidelines. I tend to ask people to avoid foods uh, that are high in synthetic sugars, go natural, organic, and of course, look even keep a food diary so that a dietitian or physician can look at this and see where a patient may be having uh, food intake that's producing these symptoms. You know, it's amazing how we abuse our GI tract because we eat so many weirdo foods, uh, foods from different ethnic origin, True. different acid, different spices, right. different volumes, mm -hmm. and we expect our GI tract to handle it perfectly. Right. Is there sometimes where we just need to settle back and just start eating good food three times a day, or you tell people to do other things? Well, there are societies in this world that only eat really about two meals a day. Sometimes we tend to overeat in America, our portion sizes can be too big, or certainly we go back for second or third helpings. I would encourage a patient to sit at the table for 15 minutes before considering a second round of food <laughs> and, and to listen to their body. Yeah, let's talk about constipation. What is, how do you define constipation? When does a patient know that they really are not having regular enough bowel habits? Well, constipation by and large can be different things to different people. We define it as having less than three bowel movements per week, or at least one fourth of the bowel movements involving either straining, excessively dry, hard stools, or not going to the bathroom at all. If somebody has constipation, I would think that most people could handle that by what? Well, certainly looking at the diet and drinking more fluid and Did, eating more fiber. Does that help? Yes, it does. And Most of us don't come close to the 30 grams of fiber we should eat every day. And so how do you teach somebody to eat more fiber? More fruits and vegetables? More situation? fruits and vegetables, read the labels, uh, eat smart, as I say. Is there fiber supplements that you can get over the counter at the drugstore? Fiber yes. Med, some of those, yes. Metamucil. What, what Metamucil, Citrusil, Fibercon, some of these are tablets, some of them are loose tablespoon. Uh, we like to have somebody try several and see which one seems to fit them best. But most people tolerate a capsule as a fiber supplement on a daily basis. And how about something that uh, stimulates the GI tract, uh, a laxative of some type? Well, the, the biggest caf uh, gut stimulant can be caffeine, either in teas or coffee. Certainly, uh, stimulant laxatives fell out of favor for a while. They, they now are commercially available and over the counter. We still caution people to, to use them only moderately or as little as they need. Much better to eat a smart, high fiber diet, drink plenty of fluids. So when is the, does the patient ring the bell that says, hey, 
I need to see the doctor. When does too much constipation, too much diarrhea? Well, certainly, from my perspective, I would encourage everybody to utilize their insurance benefits and get a screening colonoscopy when they're due to have it. Uh, don't wait to become symptomatic. Certainly, state change in stool caliber gets our attention. Uh, blood in the stool gets our attention, sometimes mucus, but also generalized abdominal pain that's more frequent than once or twice a week. When people have diarrhea, uh, they can get some over-the-counter medications to cut down on diarrhea. When does diarrhea become a warning sign? You and I were mentioning nocturnal diarrhea. Yeah. What does nocturnal diarrhea nocturnal mean? Nocturnal diarrhea is a liquid stool that occurs in the sleep, or you can have fecal incontinence. Certainly when somebody's having multiple frequent uh, stools or liquid stools for more than two to four weeks, they need to seek medical attention, certainly in this area of antibiotics. Because antibiotics can wipe out the good, healthy bacteria of our gut, predisposing to diarrhea. More and more people are traveling overseas and eating more exotic foods. And there are medications that can induce diarrhea. So it's an important thing to talk over with your doctor and your GI yeah. doctor. Before we get out of here, I want to talk about probiotics. Because okay. I know you're a fan of probiotics. Right. What are they? And is it just sort of a label? Probiotics are bacteria that we can purchase over the counter and they are found in multiple food sources that replace the good healthy bacteria in our bowel, specifically our colon. So we get rid of the bacteria by taking too many antibiotics yes. and we're depleted of the good bacteria so mm -hmm. we can take probiotics. Which one? How do you know which one to take? Well, certainly our grandmothers used to try to get us to drink buttermilk. Uh, nowadays, we have multiple yogurts. The Greek style of yogurts are very high in protein and have good healthy bacteria. There are also multiple milk products uh, out there that contain good healthy bacteria, what we call probiotics. And then for my people who just don't like fermented type products like that, there are multiple capsules that can be purchased over the counter. Name me some. Well, um, what, do you, what do you like to tell people to get? I uh, ask them to talk to their pharmacist. Obviously, they come in different uh, brand names. Uh, typically, a probiotic may have as much as 5 to up to 30 billion bacteria per dose. Wow, that's a huge, huge, huge amount. Would that overpower not, the system? Not really. I have trillions in my colon right now. Yeah. So, but supplementing this every day. Um, but uh, lactobacillus is a very typical bacteria found in multiple milk type products, yogurts, and pills. And they're different strains of lactobacillus. What if somebody drinks milk and they get diarrhea? What's going on? Certainly they may not digest the dairy sugar we call lactose. And therefore that lactose sugar gets into the colon, ferments, producing more uh, gas, distension, bloating, and, and some diarrhea. That's lactose intolerance. So if somebody can't digest the lactose, then right. they're going to have to see their GI doctor yeah. again. <laughs> Correct. You know, it's amazing how much the GI tract can take over somebody's life. True. Are the simple seventh grade health class measures of exercise, eating properly, drinking lots of liquids, and taking care of yourself, are those still? Yes, and using common sense. Listen to your body. You know, if you, if you eat something somewhat exotic and it causes discomfort or symptoms, it's probably not the best thing for you. But listen to your body.